Hey guys, Underground Geek here. So I got another video for you guys. I know you've been waiting on this one. Uh, well, maybe. I don't know. Uh, this is uh, Green Lantern Earth 1 Volume 1. I have been waiting on this book just because of the, the way that they built it up and the way that they talked about it. Gabriel Hardman and Karina uh, Becco are both very nice on social media. They'll talk to you. They'll, they'll comment on your picture. They'll retweet it, things like that. You know, all the normal stuff that normal people do on social media, that kind of translate into sales. Them being nice was the only reason I knew about this book. Okay. And then when I started to look up more about them, look up more about this, it got my attention. Now, if you go to the back of this book, it has some stuff where it kind of talks about, uh, and that's another thing about this book, it's very stiff. Like, I read this entire book, and it's still, like, super stiff to open. And, uh, like, it has right here, it says, Karina Becco. Now, this is husband and wife. They go by a different name, but it's husband and wife. It says, uh, it's a, a New New York Times bestselling author who has been uh, writing both comics and prowse since her horror graphic novel, Heathern Town was published by Image Shadowline in 2009. Now, to me, a New York bestseller, uh, uh, or New York bestselling author doesn't mean a lot to me because that's like everybody nowadays. Uh, but it was very good. And then you have Gabriel Hardman as a co-writer and artist of the Hugo-nominated sci-fi series Invincible Republic as well as writer-artist of Kinski and the Belfry, things I've never heard of. And uh, he also co-wrote uh, Star Wars Legacy, Planet of the Apes, Savage Hulk, which is cool. Sensation Comics featuring Wonder Woman, that's cool. And then you have Jordan Boyd, uh, despite nearly flunking kindergarten for his exclusive use of black crayons, he moved on to become a prolific comic book artist. Some of his recent projects include uh, Savage Things, Evolution, and Deadly Class. Okay, that's cool. Um, and then you have the back here, it talks about it says, All new adventure awaits Hal Jordan if he survives. Now, this is a different take on this book. And the book was uh, $24.99. I think I got it for like $15 or something. You know, it was a lot cheaper. And uh, so uh, this is a different take on the story because this is dark. You can tell by this right here that this is a dark take on the story. It's it's more of a, almost like a horror movie. Not really a horror movie, but just more dark and grungy. And uh, you get the cool pink paper, or green pictures here. Uh, you get the, the cool uh, Green Lantern photo there. That's kind of cool. You can tell that it's already got a different uh, feel about it. That's a cool page. I like that. Um, it has a very 2001 Space Odyssey look to it, you know? So that was kind of cool. Um, I know I'm saying cool a lot, but you know it is. It's fun. It's a fun book. Um, so right here you see one of the Manhunters. You see the Green Lantern. Uh, there's some dedications there. And then we get started here, and it kind of tells you what's going on. Basically, uh, in a nutshell, what has happened is NASA and everything has become more corporate. They have went away, and now you have this new group that is using astronauts basically as space miners. Um, and uh, so they're just going around the solar system just mining things. They're not exploring anymore. They're not finding new places. They're just mining. That's all they care about. And so you've got Hal Jordan and his group, and uh, this is how we're introduced to Hal. He's standing there very almost uh, heroic. And uh, as he's talking, he says, uh, how long has it been, Jordan? I'm going to see what's over that ridge. And he's talking about that because he's thinking of leaving, or he's thinking of staying there. He's just going to stay in space on the space station while they all leave, and you can't do that, you know what I mean? Um, so it was just very crazy, uh, the, the, the mindset that you already have for Hal Jordan. Like, he does not have anything to do with the human race. He wants to be in space. He doesn't care about people anymore. He's almost give up. And that's when they get to talking about his past. And it turns out that he was an astronaut for NASA. So you've got a different storyline there than you used to have uh, as far as him being a, an uh, you know, Air Force pilot. Now he's a, a uh, ex-astronaut. So uh, they're looking for uh, more things there. They're, he's mining for a sample. Uh, when he goes to shoot it, he actually hits this hard surface, which turns out to be like some kind of building. Um, as they're talking here, this is a pretty cool shot right there. It's like a spaceship. There you go. There's the thrusters. So that's when he breaks in. They get to looking around, and what do they find? 
a battery. So as they're looking around more, they find the dead alien. Now this is, uh, you know, this is Abin Sor here, I'm thinking. That's who they're alluding to because he's the same color and he died violently. Uh, so it's a different take on how uh, the Green Lantern was created. Okay. So the ship shifts. They actually slide down the hill and crash. Everything gets jostled around. You know, they barely make it off of it in time. And uh, that's when they take it back. They take the ring and they take the lantern back to the ship. And his friend tries to use it. And, you know, it's kind of like it says, no, you know, you're not, you're not worthy to use the ring. Throws him, actually shoots a hole in the ship. And uh, that causes him to fly out the window. He tries to grab him. It doesn't work. He loses his friend. He dies. And uh, the crew are on the other ship waiting to dock. And they see him fly off through the air. And they know something's wrong. And that's when they see how Jordan floating in space as the ship crumbles. He's almost got his suit there. Even though he uh, he still has a space suit. It almost looks like a superhero suit. So at that point, he's got the ring. He's floating in space. He knows there's something up because he can breathe. There's something different there. Um, that's when he decides to put the ring on his finger. And something else happens. And uh, at that point, he gets the uh, he get, he gets insignia on his body. They can't let him in due to they think he's got radiation. And that's when the manhunter activates. There was a manhunter on that ship. It activated and went after him. As we know, manhunters attack Green Lanterns. They you know they 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 were killing all the Green Lanterns. That's the story that we have. And so he's he's fighting him. That's pretty cool colors there. I really like these colors the way they do the greens. And. Uh, so as we get further into it, he fights the, the Manhunter, destroys it. In doing so, knocks himself out cold, lands in a different place. They uh, fix him up, and that's when he meets Kilowog. But he meets a different Kilowog. This time they're doing more of a uh, scientist take on him. And I, you know, I wasn't really that keen on it at first. You know, I wasn't excited about it, but then they, they changed it around, so I kind of liked it. You know, they're doing something different. So him and Kilwag become friends. He tells him the backstory of the Manhunters. They learn to control their powers. He's using Kilwag's battery to help charge their rings, becoming more and more powerful. And that's when the uh, the police show up, their uh, galactic force there, and pretty much what they're trying to do is keep the Manhunters from showing up. Well, they don't do a very good job. The Manhunters attack. They're killing everyone. That's when Hal Jordan decides to save Kilwag, but doesn't save anybody else. And uh, Kilwag is, is very upset at that point. He says, why would you, you know, why would you do that? We need to fight. And he goes, we can't beat them. And uh, he says, it doesn't matter. You know, you die for honor. I die saving my people. And so that's when they decide to, uh, to go on a mission. They're going to have to get stronger. They're going to have to find out how to use these rings. They're going to have to find more rings to stop these manhunters if they're going to keep attacking. That's when they go around. They actually find a planet that has another Green Lantern on there. She's very strong, very fierce. See her eyes? She's not playing around. She's almost like a female Sinestro. Um, and that's when uh, they find more people that have Green Lantern rings. More and more start to join. Um, that's when they... Um, they have to go on their own because they're not really uh, they, they don't really want to, to to join up with the Green Lanterns. They have rings and everything, but they're still fighting. They're afraid, you know. So that's when they're captured by the Manhunters. They're forced to uh, to uh, to mine minerals. Um, that's when uh, the Green Lantern, how Jordan finds a friend that is there. It turns out that it's not a friend. She betrays him, steals his ring, and then is. Uh, promptly killed by the Manhunters. They go after anyone with a Green Lantern ring and she wasn't worthy. So that's when he goes to try to run from them, but when he runs, he ends up stumbling upon the Great Battery. This is the batter, battery on Oor, the home planet. They've hit it. That's when he finds a Guardian. The Guardian tells him the story and sends him out to destroy the, the barrier between the lantern and the world that way that all the green lanterns can recharge their abilities. 
I'm trying to go through this story a little bit quicker. There's a lot to tell. I don't want to do a super long video because I want you to buy the book. It's a really good book. That's when they all join together to fight the Manhunters. And, uh, you know, there's a great, awesome battle that goes on. It goes on for pages and pages and pages. We get to more development of the characters. We start to see hints of other characters here. Who does that look like to you? How Jordan now looks different. He has facial hair. And then we have a very good ending to the story. But I don't want to tell you that because I want you to get the book. These people worked very hard on this book. It's not like a normal floppy. This is a hardcover here. I want you to go out and buy this book because it's a great story. It has great art. And uh, I really, really liked it. I mean, it's just look at that. It's so cool. It has all these different stories about it. It almost feels like an indie comic that a superhero just happens to be in, but it's done very well. And you see the difference in how, how Jordan then and how Jordan now, the way he is. He, uh, he not only grows, but he uh, develops over time and becomes more and more mature. And you can see that in the way that he grows facial hair. It's been a long time. So all in all, it's a very good book. Definitely check this out. Earth One, Volume One, Green Lantern. Uh, by Gabriel Hardman and uh, Karina Becco. I mean, it's just a really good story, guys. But I hope you liked the video. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Sorry I haven't been making a lot of videos lately. There's a lot going on in my life. I'm having to figure things out. As you know, our uh, my job lost all their inventory due to a hailstorm. Had to redo all that. So I hope you guys like this. Um, I'm doing my best to give you videos. Talk to you guys later. Underground Geek out.